welcome to the fashion bunker. Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. Chanel ripoff? Is it? What is it? What could it be? So Chanel uh, is going to, or has already released, the boy makeup range. Very small range. Uh, like eyebrow pencil, foundation, and lip gloss. Now, mind you, this is a first for Chanel. You know, they're kind of wiggling their way through this. They're not really saying it's for men. You know, they, they have the boy Les Exclusives fragrance, which is a perfume that they marketed to women that like to wear their boyfriend's white shirt. Then they have the boy bag, which they also targeted to women. Of course, we also had some guys wear the bag, but it's, you know, mostly a bag targeted to women, as all their bags are, which is ridiculous anyway. But so they're kind of calling the range the boy range, which, you know, could be for girls, for boys, doesn't matter. But they're kind of trying to tell us, so oh, it's for boys. Now, Jean-Paul Gaultier, many years back, went really direct about this and just called it the monsieur line, you know, the for, for men. For the gentleman, he made a whole range of makeup for the gentleman. Bronzer, highlights, uh, foundation, powders, lip gloss, you know, a lot of stuff. Um, it didn't really work very well. I mean, a lot of the cosmetics and fragrances from Jean-Paul Gaultier were discontinued. Not everything, but a lot of, well, all of the cosmetics, but the perfumes still remain, some of them. But anyway, so Chanel isn't the first to, to, to attempt something like this. They're only launching three products. It's very simple. Uh, apparently, first released in Asia or in South Korea, to be more specific, hitting the European and American markets as we speak. Now, I have been confronted physically <laughs> with only the lip balm. But before um, I purchase new makeup or, well, in particular makeup, I do my research because I know how these big companies usually work. They would just rebrand the same product, <laughs> call it a different name, change slight alterations, but the basic structure, the, the chemical structure of their product is basically the same. You can just adorn that tree that you already have with slight variations. You could add a little red ball on that tree in that corner instead of a blue one and call it a day. But it's still the same tree. And this is basically, if you really go on the Chanel website and you check out the composition uh, and uh, the all of the ingredients that kind of build up these products, between the boy range and the female range uh, would be the same ingredients, basically. We're going to get to it. But I've been asked several times, oh, Jacob, can you make a review? Purchase these products, make a review. What do you guys think? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not just like plucking all this money from trees and just like purchasing these products according to whoever wishes a certain review. That's not how things work. I actually, if I'm going to spend my money into something and trust you me, I am spending my money. I'm not getting these products for free. I'm going to buy something that actually works for me. You know, I'm not going to, just for the sake of a review, buy a cosmetic product that I'm, not, I'm never going to use. Makes no sense. Now, but I was very intrigued and I loved the idea, you know, that Chanel was going that route. Whether or not they're very direct about it being for men or not is a different story. Now, if you really look at their website, they actually have videos showcasing how to apply the makeup. And yes, a man is applying the makeup. So that is kind of very, I guess, official. This blonde dude is applying makeup. I guess maybe they have a different video if you go to uh, the Asian website. Uh, you know, the Asian kind of part of the Chanel website. Maybe there they have a different um, type of video. I don't know. Maybe they have some South Korean guy applying makeup, you know, just to make it more sellable for their market. I, I have no clue. I didn't check that. But anyway, love the idea after all said and done, but when the prices were released, I was like, let me get into these 
ingredients even more into specific because the prices, when I compare the product, the boy product, to the equivalent same product but targeted to women within the Chanel range, we're going to get to that as well in a minute, I notice a price discrepancy. A price discrepancy that within some products in some countries is minimal to none, like in Great Britain, the lip gloss uh, for women and for men is the same price, but that's not the case in America and it's not the case in the rest of Europe. Same applies for the foundation, huge price discrepancy between the female version and the male version, and also a price discrepancy between female and male version of the brow pencils. But let's rewind for a second and analyze the pricing within luxury brands, products, perfumes in particular, targeted or, or creams, targeted to men and targeted to women. Most of you who follow my channel will know this by now, obviously, that usually uh, fragrances that are targeted to women cost more than the equivalent concentration, you know, whether it be Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum, uh, or the Pure Parfum, because in perfumery now, also for men, there's this tendency since quite some years now to also sell the Pure Parfum to men. That was not the case in the 80s and 90s, you know, male perfume would be Eau de Cologne and Eau de Toilette, that's it. Then the Eau de Parfum started kicking in, especially with Opium Pour Homme in the 90s, and now there's a Pure Perfume tendency as well for men. But still, the same concentrations within the same fragrance brands targeted to men and to women differ in price greatly and vastly. The male fragrances costing less, way less, than the female fragrances in the same concentration or size. Example, Le Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Le Mal costs less than Classique. Classique is the female version of Le Mal. Classique came out first, a couple of years later Le Mal came out, and this is kind of the female and male version of, of the two. Um, you're going to have a 50 ml Classique cost more than a 75 ml Le Mal. So you even get more milliliters for the Le Mal than you would get for Classique. And it's kind of the same family. If you want to keep it the same name, we could even do the same name. If you check the price difference between Allure for women and Allure pour Hommes, you're going to see a discrepancy in price there as well. Male perfume costing less than the female one. But Chanel now turns the game upside down completely because all of a sudden we are confronted with a price difference where the male cosmetic product or makeup product costs more than its female pendant. How to explain this? I do not know because... Um, you know, male cosmetics are not so popular, but Chanel just doesn't seem to care. <laughs> I mean, you know, why would their perfumes cost, male perfumes cost less than female perfumes if they're, and, and men buy fragrances for men. Most men do. Not, you know, most people aren't as open-minded as we are. They don't understand that fragrance has no gender. I've seen a lot of times guys arrive to the perfume counter at Chanel be like, is this for men? Like, do you sell perfumes for men? Like, hysterically wanting to know that and have that reassurance before they even touch base on trying anything out. Let's clarify, if there's something for men, then we go for it. And that type of guy that is already so self-insecure about his own virility, if you may, how the heck is he gonna ever, ever gonna enter a Chanel store and ask for a foundation or a, a brow pencil? And then having that product cost more than the female version of it, I guess maybe that type of person would be too shy to even compare to the female version. So they're going to be tricked into, you know, I don't know. But I don't think that that type of person would ever even go and want to buy that type of makeup from Chanel. At least, I mean, they might maybe want to go and purchase it from some male brand that only caters to men. And then like they reassure you that yeah, men use that, you know. I don't know. There's all sorts of makeups out there. You know, some guys paint uh, their kind of straight lines when they shave. It's so ridiculous. They paint darker tones, like a darker beard line, so it looks fuller. 
whatever. This is just not cringeworthy. But let's get to uh, to the, this pricing. So I'm going to move to the side because, okay. So let's start with the first comparison here, guys. Um, the first comparison being the eyebrow uh, pencil. Okay, so we have the Boy de Chanel. <clears throat> eyebrow pencil, $40 price tag, the same exact pencil. The Stylo Sourcil Waterproof Defining Longwear Eyebrow Pencil. You actually have six different shades available. $33 for, plus tax. $40 plus tax for the Boy de Chanel and only four shades available. Um, that's a $7 discrepancy plus tag. Uh, tag. Tax. Now, you can check out the product, the ingredients, on the Chanel website. They list the ingredients. There's a list of ingredients. They're the same. More or less the same. Things vary slightly when it comes to the pigmentation, the colors of that particular shade of, of pencil color that you're buying. Um, maybe they want something to be more or less mattified, but with like eye pencils, eyeliners, uh, not eyeliners, with the eyebrow pencils, it's all mattified anyway. So $7 difference plus tax. Moving on to the next product, the Boy de Chanel Foundation, available in eight shades, um, $65 price tag plus tax. You have the uh, 30, this is a 30 milliliter uh, quantity. The equivalent 30 milliliter quantity of the Le Beige, a healthy glow foundation, broad spectrum SPF 25, has 13 shades available, costs $60, that's $5 difference. Now this discrepancy is much bigger in other countries, like I've checked the prices in Great Britain, there's like a 12 pound difference in price between the two the boy, the Chanel foundation costing more, costing the 12 pounds more. Um, again, here we have, if you do compare, if you do compare the uh, ingredients, very, very similar, if not exactly the same, the major, again, we're talking about this tree that I mentioned at the beginning, you know, the, the DNA, the core of it, it's the same tree. It has slight, maybe altered adornments on it, but it's, it's the same structure basically so um there you have it again they're making the male product cost more than the female product uh, of the same the same product just different packaging it's a mattified bottle that says boy de chanel moving on to the next product here we have the boy de chanel lip balm and as opposed to the rouge coco balm Hydrating conditioning lip balm. There's a $1 price difference here, $38 plus tax being the Boy de Chanel lip balm, $37 plus tax uh, being the female version of it. Um, now, again, this is the same exact product. The only slight difference is they do describe the Boy version as being more mattified, and um, the female version. Is maybe a bit more greasy, but even still, it's you know the nourishing stuff that should be in there that isn't really in there to justify that price. You're you're paying these high prices because of the branding. You're paying it because of the dream you buy with the product. Obviously, you're 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 you know the branding. You're paying the logo. You're ba you're paying the fact that it's a prestige product that it is a luxury product. And you're paying for the packaging. These are actually metal containers. I have had the boy lip balm in hand. Um, it's a very cool metal, dark blue, like navy blue metal, mattified metal container. It's round. But the female version, female version, I'm just calling it female version for the sake of having some sort of differentiation between the two. But you could also say the black container with gold uh, version of the lip balm. Uh, is also made of metal. It's also really beautiful, and it's actually more classic Chanel 
uh, much better. And actually, the, the 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 lid with a double C in the circle for the female version of the lip balm, uh, the double C is actually pressed into the metal and then painted in white. So it's very very elegant. The female, the male version, the boy lip balm has just a printed double C on top with the circle. It's not really etched in in any sort of way. So, again, if you're a guy and you think that black and gold, it's not very manly, it's more feminine, so you're going to go for this, then you, you purchase the packaging, which is a navy blue, also metallic, mattified, not glossy. And that kind of makes you more masculine. I mean, if this is what you need to feel more masculine, then I got to laugh. Then ya yeah, basic, you know, because this doesn't make you the man you is, to say it ghetto. So anyway, let me move to the Senna. <clears throat> this is this is this is it basically. That's the reason why I do not wish to purchase these products. Now I will be probably purchasing the Rouge Coco Balm, the female, as they call it, uh, lip balm, because I love the black square shaped container more to the rounded container and I love the black with the gold the Chanel black and gold it's so 80s it's also so 70s and it's just so opulent in a good way it doesn't try to be something that it's not it really goes for it uh, because that's what Chanel does um, you know the navy blue I get it why some people would want it but it doesn't warrant a higher price tag it, it doesn't strangely enough however the two lip balms seem to have the same price in Great Britain, in Great Britain only. In America and in Europe, uh, there's, a different, there's a difference in price where the Boy de Chanel lip balm is more expensive than the female lip balm. In Great Britain, this is the only exception. So this is, if you are in Great Britain, that's the only product that I would say, yeah, if you want to spend that high amount of money for a Chanel product, choose whichever you like more from the packaging you prefer more or slightly more or less mattified end result on the lips, but the lips are warm. So they heat up whatever product you put on them and it, it melts, obviously. So even the mattified version of a lip balm will also get, it will be lucidy because it'll, it'll melt on the lips. It becomes more oily. That's just the name of the game. But the rest, so Great Britain. But for the rest of the world, mostly, uh, there's a price difference and I just, I don't think it's justified. I don't prefer the packaging of the Boy de Chanel to the classic Chanel packaging, especially of the lip balm. Um, I do like the fact that when it comes to the foundation, I like the female version of the Le Beige foundation more if I'm going to go for this glass foundation because this semi-translucent bottle shows you how much uh, product you still have left inside. The male boy uh, foundation is completely dark blue. You don't see inside. You don't see how much liquid is left. And in terms of the pencil, uh, the eyebrow pencil is exactly the same product. Again, the male packaging being mattified, the female packaging being glossy, still doesn't warrant a price difference. So Chanel has turned upside down, completely upside down. This, The rules and regulations on um, marketing strategies for selling uh, beauty, cosmetics, and products to men as opposed to women. Up until now, the female products were always costing more than the male. Now the tide has turned, and I wonder how they're going to make their, if there ever will be a new, there will be, but who knows when, a new male-launched perfume by Chanel. Will it cost more than a female one? For now, that is, hasn't been the case. Even when they launched their first pure perfume or pure parfum for men, which is uh, Blue de Chanel. When they launched the pure perfume, I mean, you know, they sell 50 ml, 100 ml. I think I've even seen 150 ml of the pure perfume. Imagine the pure perfume of Chanel number no. five. For 30 milliliter, you already spend like $300 or 300 euro for it. That's how expensive it is. For 30 ml. And for 100 ml of the pure perfume of Boy, uh, of Blue, sorry, Blue de Chanel, uh, you would spend around 150 or, or, or 140. I'm not so sure anymore because I, I don't have that perfume. I'm not a... I might purchase it one day just to kind of really go for it and test it and see how it really works on my skin. But I'm not a fan of Blue. But just to say that's the only fragrance for men in the male Chanel range 
where they have stepped up the game and made a pure parfum. But even then, it, the quantity, the, constant, the quantity in milliliters um, costs less in price per milliliter than the female counterpart of the pure perfume of a Chanel fragrance would cost or does cost. So it really boggles the mind. I don't understand what they're thinking, you know, because uh, a male, because makeup for men can flop easily and then you make it cost more than the female version. So is this a ripoff is my question. Or what's the game? What's the end game? Where are, what's the game they're playing? What is the, what is behind this decision to make it cost more? Is it to make people I don't know, just like, is it to be like anti everything <laughs> and be just like, we don't care. We don't care. We're just going to make these three products because we're fabulous and we don't care. You want it, you got to pay for it. If not, not. Or, or are they, or did they really just make a mistake? Did they not think that people will compare the price of the same exact product just packaged uh, with a different name on it? I, I really defies all logic as many things that they do in terms of their price decision making oftentimes does defy all logic. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please do thumb it up and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Also, if you haven't already, but wish to consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm also on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together. There, if you become a patron, and thank you to all the patrons that have already become patrons, um, you will get access to special videos that are only available on Patreon, as well as photos. Other than that, I can also offer you merchandise. The Never Give Up On Love Fashion Bunker store, shop, boutique is open downstairs under this video. There's a bar where you can check out all the products available. At the moment, a lot of t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, what have you. It's all there. Even clothes for babies. All right, guys, I love you so much. Don't forget to never give up on love. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.